Question 1.1 reads, which one of the following compounds has the highest vapor pressure? Now we know that vapor pressure is inversely related to intermolecular force strength, which means that this question is actually asking which of the following compounds has the weakest intermolecular forces. And so what we can see here is we can see that we have a number of compounds with different functional groups. Here we have a carboxylic acid. A CHO represents an aldehyde. An OH represents an alcohol. And here we have an alkane. Now we can see that the alcohol, aldehyde and carboxylic acid are all polar molecules or all have a polar bond in their functional group and as a result would have dipole-dipole intermolecular forces whereas option D, the alkane, is non-polar and therefore would have the weakest intermolecular forces and therefore the highest vapor pressure which reads as follows which one of the formulae below represents the product of a polymerization reaction where a polymerization is where a group of monomers combine to form a large or macro molecule and the most common way in which we write a polymerization is where we show what the repeating unit is in brackets where we then use this letter n to say how many of those repeating units are stacked end to end which means that the correct answer for question 1.2 is option c question reads which one of the following combinations are both unsaturated hydrocarbons the key here is that the word hydrocarbons reminds us that these compounds must only contain hydrogen and carbon which immediately rules out option c with ethanol because that contains oxygen and ethanoic acid which also contains oxygen and unsaturated we know refers to molecules that contain multiple bonds a double or a triple bond and so the correct answer here is option b because ethene contains a double bond and ethine contains a triple bond so the correct answer to question 1.3 is option b question 1.4 reads the following which one of the following sets of values for activation energy and heat of reaction is possible for a reaction? Now, immediately when we see these two terms, activation energy and heat of reaction, we should be thinking about our endo and exothermic graphs. The one showing for an endothermic reaction showing that the heat of reaction is positive and we know that this over here is our activation energy and an exothermic graph which shows that the heat of reaction is a negative value and the activation energy once again remains the same. From this we can see a couple of things. We can see firstly that it is not possible for the heat of reaction to be equal to the activation energy because that would imply that the graph then would look something like this which we know is not possible it is also not possible for the heat of reaction to be greater than the activation energy so if we now start by looking at our possible answers option a the activation energy and heat of reaction are the same which we've said cannot be possible option b the heat of reaction is greater than the activation energy which is also not possible option c much like option a where heat and activation energy are the same is not possible which leaves only option d as a possible answer because that shows there that we then have an endothermic reaction so the correct answer to question 1.4 is d 1.5 in the multiple choice which reads as follows consider the following balanced equation for a system at equilibrium equation given here how will the addition of a catalyst to the equilibrium mixture affect the yield and reaction rate? Now, we know that a catalyst affects the reaction rate by lowering the activation energy, but this affects the reaction rate in both directions, which means that the reaction rate is certainly going to increase, but because it increases the rate in both directions, it does not affect the yield of the reaction at all. 
And so the correct answer we're looking for is yield remains the same and reaction rate increases. The correct answer there being option C. Question 1.6 is also a chemical equilibrium question, which reads as follows. A hypothetical reaction reaches equilibrium at a certain temperature in a closed container according to the following balanced equation given here. Which one of the following changes to the equilibrium conditions will result in an increase in the equilibrium constant Kc? Now, it's important to remember that our equilibrium constant Kc is equal to the concentration of the products over that of the reactants, but this product over here, carbon, is in solid form and therefore the concentration is not considered or the concentration is taken to be 1. So our equilibrium constant Kc is equal to 1 over the concentration of A, which is a gas, multiplied by the concentration of B squared. That squared comes from the coefficient of B. And the question asks, how would we increase the equilibrium constant Kc? The only way to increase this equilibrium constant would be to decrease the concentration of our reactants, to decrease the concentration of the reactants. And we would do that by favoring the forward reaction because the forward reaction uses up reactants and produces more products. Now, also important to remember that it is only a temperature change that can affect our value of Kc, so that means that options C and D are not options. And then what we use is we use this enthalpy here, given delta H less than zero, which tells us that the forward reaction is exothermic, meaning the forward reaction gives off heat. So in order for us to favor the forward reaction, we need to use Le Chatelier's principle, which says that if we decrease the temperature, by decreasing the temperature, the reaction would favor the direction that would attempt to undo that change in this case, that means favor the exothermic reaction, favor the forward direction. So the correct answer here is option B. Again, that is because we would like to decrease the concentration of the reactants and we do that by favoring the forward reaction and we favor the forward reaction by using the Chatelier's principle, which tells us if we cool the reaction down, it will attempt to heat itself up by favoring the exothermic direction. Question 1.7, which is a multiple choice question on acids and bases, and reads as follows. A hydrochloric acid solution and an acetic acid solution of equal concentrations are compared. How do the hydronium ion concentration of HCl and the pH of HCl compare with that of acetic acid? And what we need to remember here is that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. We know that it is a strong acid because it ionizes completely when placed in water, whereas an acetic acid is a weak acid, which means it does not ionize completely in water. What that tells us is that the strong acid will always produce a higher concentration of hydronium ions, which means our options are either A or B, and stronger acids have lower pHs, as we remember that uh, stronger pHs are closer to zero. And so the correct answer here is that the hydronium ion concentration in HCl is higher than that of acetic acid and the pH is lower. So the correct answer to 1.7 is option B. With question 1.8 in multiple choice, which reads as follows. Two hypothetical half reactions and their respective reduction potentials are shown below. Here we have two half reactions. A galvanic cell is set up using the above substances and immediately what we should see here is that a galvanic cell we know must be a spontaneous reaction and the only way in which these two half reactions can react spontaneously is if the half cell with the lesser or the more negative cell potential undergoes oxidation. So what that tells us is that substance B in its solid form will be oxidized and substance A in its ionic form is going to be reduced. We can tell this because they have told us it's a galvanic cell and it must therefore be spontaneous and in order for it to be spontaneous the more negative cell potential is always going to undergo oxidation, the more positive cell potential is always going to undergo 
reduction. Which one of the following statements is correct for this galvanic cell? And option A says B in its solid form is the reducing agent. Now, we know that a reducing agent is the substance that allows reduction to occur. And that means that reduction is in order for A in its ionic form to gain two electrons, something needs to give off two electrons. Something needs to make those two electrons available. And we can see that that is indeed B in its solid form that is making that possible because it is B that gives off those electrons that allows A to be reduced. So option A is correct. I'm just going to go through the other options to show why they are incorrect. Um, B says that A in its solid form is the oxidizing agent. We know that in order for A to be an oxidizing agent, it needs to allow oxidation to happen. Now oxidation needs to aid in the loss of electrons and that is certainly not happening here because it is A in its ionic form, A2+, plus, that is the oxidizing agent because it is taking the electrons from B. So this would be correct if they had said A2+, plus, but because they have said A is the oxidizing agent, this substance has already been reduced and therefore cannot act as an oxidizing agent. The mass of substance B will increase. We know that this is not true because B is being oxidized. That means that this is going to be breaking down and therefore the mass will slowly decrease of our B in its solid form. And the mass of A will decrease is also not correct because as we have shown, A is going to go from its ionic form where it gains electrons and the mass of A is going to increase. So the correct answer to question 1.8 is option A because B in its solid form is allowing reduction to take place. Question 1.9 in multiple choice, which reads as follows. In an electrolytic cell, the anode is the positive electrode. And we can stop right there because we know that in a galvanic cell, the cathode is the positive electrode. And that is the change that happens between an electrolytic and a galvanic cell when it is no longer spontaneous is that the anode now becomes the positive electrode. So the correct answer to question 1.9 is option A. Question 1.10, a multiple choice question which reads as follows. Which one of the following is used as a catalyst in the Ostwald process? And the Ostwald process requires a platinum catalyst, so option C is the correct answer there.